Pledge of Wellbeing Covenant is a document that's recently been passed by the General Synod of the Church of England as an act of synod. This means that it'll now be going to every diocesan synod, including ours here in Leicester, for discussion and debate. And we'll need to consider how we're going to embody its principles around the well-being of clergy in our life together in this diocese. One of the recommendations in the covenant is that every minister should in some shape or form receive pastoral supervision, both because it's good practice and because it enhances well-being. So to talk a little bit about that, I have with me now Canon Helen Newman. Helen is currently chaplain at Lawned Abbey and a priest with many years of pastoral experience. Helen, thank you for being here. Thanks, Kelly. It's good to be with you. Great. So, Helen, I'm just going to pose a few questions to you, if I may. Um, and first of all, I simply want to ask you um, what your own experience is of receiving and offering pastoral supervision, because we know that it's increasingly common practice in many professions, but not so much yet in the church. Yeah, well, throughout my working life, I've actually benefited enormously from being in regular pastoral supervision and having the opportunity to reflect on my work. So my first job was with the Church of England Children's Society um, in a therapeutic unit for emotionally disturbed children. And as part of this job, I had monthly pastoral supervision. And for me, it was enormously beneficial um, and actually kept me in the job. Um, I'll say a bit more about that later. Since then, um, working in a parish, um, I received monthly pastoral supervision um, and the PCC paid for that because they saw it as a very important part of my pastoral ministry. Um, and then when I was working as a hospice chaplain at Loros, pastoral supervision was very much um, expected and valued and paid for. So again, I received that uh, in a monthly way personally. I also set up um, a reflective practice group for all those in the chaplaincy team so that we would meet um, again monthly and people would have the opportunity to reflect on their work together. Um, and now I'm doing that at Lawn for uh, groups of spiritual directors to enable them to reflect on their work. Okay, so so Helen, can you say a little bit about how pastoral supervision is distinct from other forms of support? So you've mentioned spiritual direction, for example, or mentoring or coaching and so on. Hmm. I think all those things we've mentioned are enormously beneficial and it may be at different times one of those is particularly appropriate and helpful. So, for example, at a time of transition when one might be moving into a new parish, to have some coaching to help you to um, set your goals and work out the direction you want to move in um, what might help you to achieve that coaching can be very beneficial but would tend to be more um, short term I would suggest and with a particular uh, goal orientated focus. Mentoring um, tends to be with a more experienced practitioner so it might be that um, a clergy person has a mentor who's just more experienced in parish ministry or whatever. Um, and that's more, I would say, um, a sharing of expertise, sharing of experience, guidance. Um, spiritual direction um, is very much helping an individual to find out where God is at work in their life. So pastoral supervision, um, it might be more helpful to talk about this as reflective practice. Uh, because supervision can have an unhelpful connotation for some people, um, is a safe, bounded, intentional meeting, which will either be one-to-one -one or in a group, where there has to be trust um, and openness and an opportunity to reflect very honestly about how our ministry, how our work life is working out. So, we might choose to bring a particular scenario to pastoral supervision, which we feel went badly wrong. Uh, we lost our way. We weren't sure how we could have handled it better. And we're not seeking advice or the right answer or correction or anything like that. What we're seeking in pastoral supervision is the opportunity to reflect in a way that helps us to 
notice what's happening, notice what's happening within us, perhaps notice patterns that continue to um, dog us in our ministry. If we're not aware of certain things that um, we set up without realising it and then the, the repercussions of that. And also helping us to wonder, you know, I wonder what was happening there. I wonder how that might have been different. And what is particular to pastoral supervision, which has a Christian foundation, is that we seek to examine our own story and our own life within the bigger story, the God's story. So there might often be a biblical image or uh, something that comes to mind from others in the group or from the pastoral supervisor. So that as an experience is shared, for example, a vicar coming saying, I've absolutely had enough, I can't go on the choir, impossible. The church warden just been moaning, moaning. Um, and it might be, actually, as you talked about that, I was thinking about Elijah on Mount Sinai. Absolutely depressed, exhausted, had worked so hard, thinking, what's the point of it all? And then recognising the way that God ministered to him through the angel, said, you need to eat, you need to rest. Those patterns that can help us to remain well um, in our own ministry. Mm -hmm. And I'm a great advocate of this because I do think it has an enormous impact on our well-being and also our resilience. Because I would say having been in some quite difficult um, both parish contexts, demands of hospice um, and other situations, um, having this safety valve for my work, the opportunity to reflect, has really helped me to stay well. Um, and to develop my own resilience and inner resources in ministry. Thank you so much, Helen. I mean, in a sense, you've answered my final question as well as about part of the second, which was, you know, why is it so important uh, for us to experience pastoral supervision or reflective practice as you've, um, as you've also called it and to incorporate it as part of our discipline, um, mm. if you like, within the diocese. So I'm really grateful for your insights. And I hope that this brief conversation will encourage other people to, to reflect on the benefits of pastoral supervision and that it'll gradually become a normal part of our diocesan life. So thank mm. you very much, Helen. Thank you.